we're ready to troubleshoot the cable right from the factory this did not work but basically this plug-in right over here goes to plug-in on the outside of the camp this cable right here is actually the cable that used to be plugged in from the wall to the back of the TV. We're gonna go ahead and troubleshoot it and see what the heck the problem is. I don't think it's even connected inside the wall. I think the connection is broken somewhere. We've been screwing with this cable connection now for, or I have been for a couple of days now. And I ended up going and ordering a different tester on Amazon. This is a multi-band tester or multi-channel tester or multi-cable tester, however you wanna look at it. And it comes with these individual little probes that you put on the end of each connection. And in a camper where you have all sorts of connections, determining where they go can be sort of tricky. So I have figured out that this thing is wired absolutely incorrectly. I'm basically going to take all the wires off, figure out where they go, and then reconnect them to the back of this control board in the appropriate order as labeled on the control board. Because right now, it does not appear to me that they're even remotely attached to the correct items. All right, so we've completely removed the control board. So on the control board, which is gonna be really hard to see, you have individual plugs. So this is the power supply, this is the ground. That allows the switch, this button, to work. And that allows your antenna to get power, which is on the roof. On this control board, you can't really read it, but right down in front of my finger, it says antenna, or A-N-T. This next one back here says cable down in there. And then this is TV2 and TV3. Now realize that TV1 is here. So TV1, TV2, and TV3. In my case, TV1 is my TV that mounts right here on the wall. TV2 will be in my bedroom. And TV3 is outside. The antenna hooked up to the correct place. The cable TV hooked up to the correct place. And the satellite will get connected here and just comes through to here. So you have to switch back and forth depending on if you're hooked up to satellite or cable or antenna. That's a bummer. They had this super gooey sealant stuff to keep this sealed up. And of course, in order to check the connection, I had to ruin that super gooey sealant stuff. This may be reusable. It's still pliable and still sticky. That connection was loose, so we fixed that. All right, so we've redone the goop. Okay, that one's done. So right at the back of the camper, we have our cable and our satellite. So we're gonna use red for cable, and we're going to use black for satellite. So we have our receiver unit here. So this wire, I believe, brown wire, comes from the satellite. So when I plug this into the top of my sending or receiver unit, and I push the button, it should light up the little black light right here. And it doesn't, it lights up the red light. So this is the cable wire coming into the camper. So this needs to hook up to the back of the connection into the cable lo cable location, which is here and not here. So now that we've tested that one, we're gonna go ahead and unconnect our receiver unit and plug it in. All right, first one done and connected. So hopefully the orange one now will indicate as black, and it does. So the orange one is satellite, because it indicates as black. So the orange one is satellite because it indicates as black, and satellite gets plugged in to the bottom, which is not where it was connected originally. All right, so we have three more wires, and then we have the power and ground. Power and ground, we know where they go, but these other three wires, we need to figure out where they go. Okay, this is in the bedroom. This is the connection that was on the wall, and I decided to go ahead and pull that off the wall before I connected everything up, and I found this. So that makes me very nervous as to what's going on inside the wall, because right now I can't figure it out. So we're going to go ahead and throw a green sending unit. It's her Furion TV. So we have a blue sending unit for the third TV connection on the outside of the camper. So we need to figure out which of these wires has the blue connector on the end of it, which will be the third TV. So I'm gonna start off with this gray one, 
and hopefully this lights up green. And it says fault, which means it's not even hooked up to anything. Let's try this gray one. And that's showing up as black. And the real killer is I don't even have the black sending unit connected. And I suspect that that has to do with the T that's in the bedroom. So we're gonna go disconnect the T and try and figure out which wire this is. Now because that's right on the other side of this wall, I, I can kind of jiggle the wire and figure out which wire this is. So this wire goes in there to one of those T connections. But the reality is these two wires don't go anywhere that I can determine. So we're gonna pull off this one. Oh, okay, so I can hear this jiggling in the wall. So this comes around to the other side of the wall down to that connection. That this should be the in. This should be going into the in terminal, not where this TV connection is at. Now we're going to test this wire and see what it does because I don't actually know where this goes. So I have a couple of testers hooked up on the outside. We'll see which one this is. Okay, so this is the blue one. Which is good, so that is the, would be the third TV. It's teed in the wall, and if that's feeding this, we'll just, we're gonna connect this back up to where it belongs, which is back where it was. I'm gonna grab my tools and rebuild this jumper really fast. So I have these 90 degree, these are what, RG5 or RG6 connections, RG6 connections, uh, compression style fittings. And I'm going to put that on the back of the plate in order to allow the wires to run down inside the wall like they belong. I mean, you can actually see the plate was bent because of the pressure of having it installed incorrectly the first time. So this gray wire comes from inside the bedroom. So this would feed TV two, and because there's a T up there, it also feeds TV three. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this wire into TV two on the back of the connector. When I tested these a little bit ago, they faulted. Since then, I've discovered that this wire, this gray wire, actually runs to the back of this multi-purpose entertainment unit to it. So I disconnected this thing and pulled it out. And it has this wire here that has the gray wire connected to it. On the back of this, there's a diagram and it says antenna. So I am going to assume the antenna jack on the back of this should be going to the antenna, except that's not right. Because this white wire is the only wire that I can't figure out where it goes and it has to go to the antenna, which means this white wire goes to the antenna jack on here which leads me to believe that the last plug-in would be TV3, which would feed this unit. So we're gonna wire it that way. So we're gonna hook up the white wire to antenna and the gray wire that goes to this unit to TV3 on the back of that plug. And the white wire, which I can't find a signal for, we're gonna hook up to antenna, because I can only assume that it's the only thing I can't find a signal for and that it goes to antenna. So by process of elimination and tracing most of the wires out, we've been able to kind of figure out what goes to the most logical places, at least the best of my ability at the moment. Okay, so with all that done, this thing is ready to go back in the wall. It should all work properly at this point. All right, so we've got our orange wire. We just cut it off the end. This is a cable stripping tool specifically for RG six connections got a couple little different sizes on there and you clamp it and you spin it and then you pull the wires off and it strips everything like it's supposed to so you've got the wire the internals so you fold back these little shielding grounding wires around the outside and you have the internal sleeve on that these little 90 degree connectors are 86 dollars for 25 so they're not cheap i use them when it uh, definitely will benefit me so you make sure that that thing is in there and on there all the way and then I have this special compression tool designed for these T's which compresses that fitting and gives me 
90, which allows it to not kink when we plug it into the back of this port. Now there are other ways to do this. You could do this with the little thread-on style and they are cheaper, um, but it, you potentially get signal deterioration. So I like these ones a lot better and for how often I need them, I just buy a, another box of them every couple years. All right, so that is on there now. So because this wall is so thin, this is gonna kind of push around this wall edge here and go back where it belongs. Back in business, when I push this button, that red light should come on. And it does. So that just turned on the antenna on the roof. Well, this is going to wrap up the fixing of the cable in my camper. It did all work. Having the connections all go to the correct places was really the problem. Once we got that all fixed, everything worked out perfectly. You're getting a little sneak peek of the upcoming video for repairing the rest of the camper. In any case, I hope you guys enjoyed. I really hope you got something out of this one. It's definitely a pain in the butt to fix the cable on a camper, but I know for a fact that this is something that affects other people. So hopefully you got a lot out of it.